Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 22nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Scottsdale, Arizona. Microsoft still delivered one bulletin from February's skipped patch Tuesday today, and that's MS17005. It is uh, the Microsoft mirror of Adobe's Flash bulletin that was published last Tuesday. For quite a while now, we did have it where Microsoft did issue bulletins for Flash updates that did affect Microsoft's own browsers like Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer 10 as well as 11. So this is no big surprise. This isn't really a new vulnerability here. Just Microsoft did publish this bulletin now because the vulnerabilities were already known and addressed in Adobe's bulletin. So with Microsoft's update today, we now have a patch for these vulnerabilities for Internet Explorer 10, 11, and Edge. Last week, we had a diary by Xavier about how the preferred network list can be used against a user to detect what locations this user may have visited in the past. Well, a great testament to the diversity of our handlers. Today, we sort of have a defensive response to that particular article by Rob that will show you how to collect these preferred network lists from users in your environment using a PowerShell script. This can be quite useful to figure out if certain users are very careless about connecting to other wireless networks and can then also be used, of course, to detect machines at risk of being compromised. Of course, this may not be perfect given that it's not that difficult to impersonate SSIDs and tools like Karma, of course, will allow an attacker to automatically impersonate any SSID that a particular client is looking for. So Rob's PowerShell script is ready to go for you if you would like to investigate your network to figure out what your users are connecting to. CyberX, a company that specializes in monitoring industrial control systems, published an interesting blog article about some malware they found at several of their customers. What's sort of unique about the malware is that it does enable the microphone on the system and then exfiltrates large audio files back to whoever is in control of the malware. Of course, there's no news here in terms of being able to turn on the microphone, but really most malware doesn't bother doing so because it does take some substantial resources to actually go through these audio files and find interesting data. How that backend processing works isn't really clear based on the sample. The files are encrypted, then exfiltrated using Dropbox. Again, Dropbox, not really all that uncommon to be used because it is often whitelisted it but uh, someone then has to go through these audio files in particular if you're considering that some of the audio may be recorded from individuals that are standing a little bit away from the infected computer it's very likely that any kind of automatic voice recognition will probably not work very well on these samples now given that this is probably more sophisticated malware it's also kind of interesting how it borrows a lot of techniques from garden variety ransomware for example, to infect the user, it sends a spreadsheet or a Word document with macros that the user has to enable in order to get infected by this malware. Like I mentioned before, it does use free web hosting sites or Dropbox for some of its exfiltration and command and control infrastructure. So really could easily be mistaken for some random malware. But usually the real distinction between random malware and targeted malware is the amount of reconnaissance that an actor has to perform in order to get the victim infected. And uh, this malware actually appears to be really more part of this reconnaissance where you collect information and not necessarily try to affect systems yet. CyberX is reporting that uh, this particular malware mostly targeted uh, users of industrial control systems or vendors, but then again, that's CyberX's market, so there may be some bias here where they're just not seeing some of the samples being deployed against other targets. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.